Welcome to Touch Technology Review. Today, we're going to take a look at the Canon EOS R and how to set it up for your video shoots or photography. I've been using this camera here in the studio for the past six months producing these face-to-camera videos, product close-ups, and just about everything in my workflow now involves using this camera. I've still got the Canon 5D Mark III, which I use as a secondary camera. In fact, I'm using it right now because I wasn't able to put this camera on the tripod and film this opening scene. One of the things that I noticed when setting up the old 5D Mark III is how much I miss the autofocus functionality that you get on this EOS R, in particular, the eye autofocus. Incidentally, if you have already bought into this camera and you're having issues with autofocus, check out my video, which I'll leave a link to in the description box below, which explains the process of updating the firmware on this camera so you get the latest version of software. And they've significantly improved the function of eye autofocus to the point now that I find it really comparable with any any other camera on the market. Previously, it had been criticized for not quite being as accurate as it should be. So some great enhancements in this new firmware if you wanna see how to do it in the description box below. The other thing that I really love about this camera and why I'm sure most of you have picked one up or are considering purchasing is the fact that it does have this great autofocus system. So for this particular opening scene today with the Canon 5D Mark III, I had to revert back to tethering via a cable onto my Microsoft Surface tap to focus to make sure that I've got the scene in focus and I can monitor what I'm doing. With the EOS R and this flip out screen, I can just put it on a tripod and I can monitor what I'm doing. And when I've got the camera too far away that I can't really see the image, I'll usually tether it to my iPhone or iPad and that's done wirelessly now. So it's got some really nice new features in terms of being able to monitor what you're doing, ideally suited for vloggers and a YouTube channel. But getting back to the point that I want to focus on today, and that is how to actually set up the camera for optimal results when you're shooting stills or video. And as I mentioned in the intro, one of the best things you can do with this camera as soon as you get it, particularly if you've got an RF lens, is to configure that front dial to the setting that most suits your style of photography. For me, when I'm doing street photography, for example, I like to be able to access my aperture at the touch of a finger at the front of the lens, the way I used to do it using the old film cameras. I've got one here, the old Olympus, and you'll notice on the front of the lens, it has the aperture dial, which I can easily access my wide open aperture of 1.8 all the way through to f16. And this new feature on the EOS R kind of mimics that old style of aperture control on film cameras. So I really like the way they've implemented that. So I thought we'd start with a demonstration of how to set up the control ring on the front. You don't have to map it to your aperture. You can use shutter speed, exposure control, ISO, or even white balance. So the choice is yours. There's a number of options available for you. But as I mentioned, I find using it for aperture control is the most effective. So in order to map a setting onto the front control ring, tap on the left hand menu option and then go over to the orange menu section, which is the fifth section along the top and then keep moving along until you get to section number four. And here you've got a number of options. You can customize all of the buttons on your camera, the dials, which is the one we're about to go into and also the customized multifunction bar, which we'll take a look at next. So let's start with our front dial. So we tap on the second option down, which is customized dials. We now get another sub menu and the first option is our top dial just behind the shutter button. And then the next option is the top dial just around the mode button. But we wanna go down one further and that will take us to our control ring. Once we've selected it, it highlights in white at the front so you know you're selecting the right option. Then you can tap on the set button on the back of the camera to get into it. And now you'll see we have a number of different options. There's eight options in total, including an off button, which means you can actually turn the functionality of that dial off if you find it annoying. The first four are aperture, shutter speed, ISO and exposure control, all accompanied by a downward pointing arrow, which means that if you do select one of these options, you'll need to tap on the shutter button lightly before the control ring actually works. Now, this is a way of preventing you 
from accidentally moving the control ring as you're carrying the camera around. This is actually the way I set my camera up and I find it the most useful. However, if you want your control ring to work at all times, no matter whether you're pressing the shutter or not, then you can select the ones that don't have the downward pointing arrow. So let's start with the first one. As I mentioned, I like to set up my control ring with aperture. So I generally select the AV option for aperture. If I wanted to use that control ring for shutter speed, I'll move along to shutter speed. I could change it to ISO or I could change it to exposure compensation. Again, if I'm using the ones with the arrow, I'll need to depress the shutter button down lightly before it actually works. If I wanted to use it without having to do so, I'll select one of the options that doesn't have an arrow. So I'm going to go ahead and set it with AV with the arrow down, which means that I can change my aperture using the control ring by holding down the meter button slightly. And that's all you need to do to set up the control ring on the RF series of lenses on your Canon EOS R. The next setting that I want to have a look at was the touch bar on the back of the camera. This is a completely new design by Canon and it was criticized by some people that reviewed the camera. They felt it was kind of useless and perhaps didn't offer much value. Now that being said, certainly it could have been done with a control wheel, could have been done with a joystick, any other type of button. But I guess Canon were moving towards some kind of innovation in interface design here ever so slight that it was, I think it's actually quite a nice feature and I'm enjoying using it. I tend to use it to set my ISO. So with my older cameras, there was actually an ISO button on the EOS R to access your ISO. You've got to use the touch screen on the back of the camera or you've got to tap into the multi-function button, which we'll go through next, which then gives you a subset of options to finally get into ISO. So in order to get ISO up front, like I used to have it on the old 5D Mark III, I've assigned the touch bar on the back to control my ISO. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to do that. So in order to do that, again, we tap on the menu option on the back of the camera. We're going to be in the same menu section, which is the fifth one along in orange. And this time we're gonna go down to customize the multi-function bar. So it's the third option down. Again, we tap on the set button on the back of the camera to enter into the mode. And you can see I've already got ISO set up in there. But if you wish to change that, tap into it. And now you can change that to white balance, checking your focus, movie recording, which then gives you access to the volume control of your manual audio settings, aperture priority, autofocus, user customization, which will give you access to what I'm gonna show you later in the video, which is your custom user controls. And you can also opt for not assigned, which means the track bar will not be operational at all if you're one of those people that find it annoying more than useful. Certainly, as I mentioned, I'm gonna use it for my ISO settings and I think it works really well. The next thing you really need to understand is the multi-function button. As I mentioned earlier, there's a subset of parameters that are available by touching this option. So this will be different depending on whether you're in video or photography mode. If I'm in video mode and tap on the option, you'll see that it comes up with ISO and white balance options. So only two to select from when you're in video mode. In order to navigate between the two, use the dial that surrounds the mode button on the top of the camera to go left and right between the two options. So you can set your ISO and white balance settings accordingly. Now, if you wanna flip over to photography mode, you need to tap onto the mode and info button simultaneously. And you'll now see that we have a different range of mode options available, which we can select from. So you've probably already discovered this already. You can toggle between manual setting, aperture priority, shutter priority, program mode, and so on. All these options are available for you to view and navigate between using that front dial and you can see them on the top display and also on your rear LCD viewfinder. So when we tap on the multifunction in our photo mode, you'll see we get many more options. It starts with ISO. Again, I'll use the top dial surrounding the mode button to navigate. The next one is our shutter controls and go all the way to single shutter, multiple shutter, timer, and so on. Next one is focusing, where I can go from one shot to servo. The next one is white balance, 
and then exposure compensation. So a very quick way of getting into those main functions, which incidentally are also available on the LCD screen if you prefer to use that by tapping on the Q on the right hand corner of the screen. We get access to all of those features plus a whole lot more. So really with the Canon EOS R and the touchscreen display, it kind of has been designed to give you best access to all of the features using that touch panel. But some of these really essential features that you need to change frequently, I feel are best used using these options which are really well designed and ergonomically placed on the camera. The final thing I wanted to show you so that you can get the most out of your ESR and be ready for shooting in any situation in the quickest time possible is the custom shooting mode. You get three options here where you can set up your predefined parameters ready for each shoot. So if we go into the fourth yellow menu section along to section six in the sub menu, just underneath the multifunction lock option, you'll see custom shooting mode C1 to C3. So if you tap on that, it allows you to register the current settings that you've set manually on your camera. So for example, if I was to set up this particular scene right now, I'm very likely to shoot it in 1080p at 25 frames per second, all eye. I'll have a 1.8 aperture. I'll probably be shooting at 1 1 60th of a second or 1 1 20th. So all those settings I know in my head, but rather than having to go back each time that I come to shoot one of these types of scenes, I can have this set in my custom shooting mode number one, for example. So I've already set those parameters up. I'll go into the menu option at the back, yellow section number four, sub menu six, into custom shooting mode, select it by tapping on the set button on the back of the camera and register settings. The camera will now register all of those settings that I've just set up for this shoot. So the next time I go to shoot this type of video, it's ready to go for me. I can also do the same for still photography. If I'm doing street photography, for example, I usually have my ISO set to 400. I might be shooting on 5.6 to f11, anywhere in that range. And I might also have a 1125 shutter speed. I can have all of those settings predetermine on the camera. Again, navigate back into this section and select custom shooting mode. And when I tap on the set button, this time I'll scroll down to custom shooting mode C2. And then I can repeat this process one more time. For example, I like to shoot some of my videos in 4K with C-Log. So in my third custom shooting mode, I'll go and set all those settings up manually on the camera, come back into this section, and I'll navigate down to custom shooting mode three, tap on the set option at the back and register camera settings to custom shooting mode C3, confirm, okay. And I've now set up my three different custom settings. Now that you've done that, you might be wondering how you can access them. It's actually really straightforward. They're available to you whether you're in your photo or video mode. So at the moment I'm in my photo mode on the top of the camera, if I tap on mode, you can see all of my options such as aperture priority, shutter priority, and so on. And you can also select C1, C2, and C3, which allows me to select between those custom shooting modes that I'd set up previously. So really easy to access. You can do the same in video mode. To go into my video mode, tap on the mode and info button together. You'll see now, that we get all the different video settings on top of the camera and on the back of the screen, including manual, aperture priority, shutter priority, and so on. And we also get access to my C1, C2, and C3 custom shooting modes. So that's how I set up my Canon EOS R to enable me to get right into my shoot, whether it's video production or photography, and it really streamlines the process and makes the camera an absolute joy to use. So hopefully you found this information helpful. If you did, feel free to hit me up with a like. If you've got any questions whatsoever about this video, about the EOS R, feel free to put them in the comments box below. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye for now.